Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Bobby from Repair Shopper and it's time for another Feature Friday video. This week's gonna be a little bit of a throwback just because I wanna cover a feature that I think is maybe being a little underutilized or there might be some confusion around it. So let's talk about it, deposits. Uh, I've definitely been answering questions from new users about how the deposit system works and maybe uh, through this video, for those that aren't using it, they'll start using it within within their shops. So let's start off. First, you need to go to admin and then invoice preferences. So let's do that now. And you need to, of course, turn the feature on. Make sure to check the box and hit save. The next major thing you need to do that I sometimes see people miss is you need to go to the inventory preferences and then in the category editor, you need to create a deposit category. Make sure it's a, a primary category um, that's key to making sure that the entire deposit system actually works. So once that's added to the category editor, we're ready to go. Now let's head to the inventory screen and I'm gonna cheat a little bit because I already have a deposit made. So. This is where things start to differ depending on your business. Some may take a fixed amount of a deposit, maybe a diagnostic fee to maybe sometimes uh, you'll take different size deposits depending on the type of work you're gonna do. Well, the system's a little bit flexible. You can of course have multiple different types of fixed deposit amounts. So maybe if you offer you know, five different services, they can have five different deposit amounts. There's also the ability to do a variable deposit, which I'll show you how to do as well. But first, what we need to do, if you're brand new to the feature, is create a new product. You can really name it whatever you want. I usually like to use the word deposit in it so that it's easy to know which, uh, which ones belong in the deposit category uh, and which ones don't. Uh, give it a description and an amount you wanna charge for the deposit. And before you hit save, right here in category, make sure that you choose the deposit feature. That's the important part of this uh, section right here. And then of course hit save or update product and you're done. So let's actually take a look at this in motion. So I'm gonna just, in this case, pick a already open ticket. So what we wanna do is go to actions, take deposit, and then you'll see here we have a bunch of fixed deposit amounts. And if that's how you do your business, you can do that just by creating individual deposit products at a fixed amount. Or if you have maybe different deposit amounts often enough that you don't want a fixed button for your technicians, you can create this field here by creating a deposit product that does not have a retail price on it. If you leave it at $0, this field will appear. So if you wanna take a $2.50 deposit on something, you can. In this case, we need to open a register and then you go to the payment screen directly from choosing the deposit amount. You capture the deposit, it takes you through the normal invoice uh, screen so you can capture your signatures and you'll be left on the invoice for the deposit. Next, you can head back to the, the ticket, which will be automatically linked. And if you go to the add view charges, you'll see that there is a variable deposit amount already on the ticket itself. So let's say I've done the work on this and I wanna add some labor, spelling, step one, add some labor, close that out, and then you're ready to give the device back to the customer and charge them. What you'll wanna do is create a second invoice and the charges, including the credit, will carry over onto this second invoice and the deposit will be deducted from the other line items on the invoice. And you can charge the customer like you normally would and that's it. Um, just to recap really quick, the important parts, of course, to turn the feature on in the invoice preferences. That's the first option. The second thing you need to do is head to the inventory preferences, 
specifically to the category editor and add the deposit amount. Then the third thing you need to do is create a deposit product. And again, the key here is to make sure that the product is put into the deposit category. Anyway, I hope everyone enjoys this kind of in-depth detail about the deposit system, and I look forward to talking to you in the next one. Have a great week.